list of people. A long list of people of names that I have to tell you. I, I, I had a lot of trouble pronouncing. And you'll find out in a moment. I thank God for Johnny Cash because we're going to let him read them all for you. Amen. But at first glance, when we read about this, I didn't get this. It's a long list of people in Rome. And, and, and I don't know if you know this. Did you know that Paul didn't really spend a lot of time in Rome? I'm going to leave that to you for a, a history lesson and a study. But at first glance, when we look at 16, it doesn't seem to offer a whole lot that could interest even today. In so much as the names are hard, as I said, they're hard to pronounce. Or they're even harder to spell. Oh, my goodness. But Paul sends greetings to some people with strange names like Am Amplilatus or Ur Urbanus. And do you see what I'm saying? I can't even say it right now. I mean, here's one, Phlegon, P-L. P H L E G O N, Phlegon. I, I probably just crucified that Lord. I hope that that saint that's gone to heaven, you know, a couple centuries ago, Phlegon. Forgive me for for butchering your name, but, but your name is mentioned. But to make matters worse, we don't even know who most of these people are. It's not like in the Old Testament when you you read this on the line of this person, or this person you get that person, and it's all about the line that leads up to Jesus, and that's all. Hey, that's kind of cool to know the family, you know, the family tree, as it were. But these people, we don't even know who they are, and they're never mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. And so you're thinking, oh, come on! I can't pronounce their names. And just so you know, for me, it's sort of a violation. I can't cut that part out. They're there for a reason. Amen? Amen? Everyone, I know some of you may have, some of you are letter writers, but everybody who's a letter writer, everyone who, who has written a letter understands, though, what Paul is doing here. What he's doing, he's basically finished everything that he wanted to say to the Rome. Romans chapter 1 through 15. He's, he said everything he wants in his letter to them. But here's the thing. He's got a lot of friends in the church. Amen. A bunch of friends. And so what's he do? He scribbles off a few lines of greetings to as many people that he can, that he can remember. Or, or maybe it's to as many people as he can think of putting on the paper. I, I, I hate writing letters. And sometimes, uh, you know, I, even on the back of the bulletin with prayer requests, I know I've left some people out. And I feel, <laughs> and then, look, Lord, do, do I just forget everybody? No, I can't, so I'll put the ones that I remember, and then I'll grieve over the ones I forgot. Just if your name isn't on the prayer list, it's not because I, I forgot you, I just forgot to put you on air. Amen? Amen? Some of us do the same thing when we write letters. As you come to the bottom of that final page, you're, you're almost done, and, and, and you start writing smaller letters, and, and you get shorter sentences because you're going to try to get as much, you might get, a, get down there. Have you ever received a letter like this? Um, that come from somebody, you know, maybe it's, you know, someone who's long ways away. They don't get to see the family as much as you do. So, you know, something like this. Tell Aunt Sue I loved her dress. Tell Bobby I said hello. Tell Uncle Joe I tried to call last Friday, but nobody was home. Oh, and by the way, give Jimmy a hug for me and tell him, tell him this time he better stay on that diet. Got to go now. Love you. Bye. Signed me. I only wrote me because I didn't have enough rhyme. I don't have room in the paper after writing all that down to get my own name on the paper. That's kind of sad. I didn't get my name on the paper. Maybe you've never done that. But seen in that light, this chapter offers us, I think, a little bit of a snapshot, maybe a rare vision, of, a view of early Christianity. I mean, give me that old-time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Let me tell you what. We need to go back to the old time religion. Because it's good enough for me. I mean, behind all this list of unpronounceable, uh, unspellable names is, is I think, a, a foundation of truth about the nature of a budding Christian movement, a Christian movement that was just getting started, and why it had the power to change not only the ancient world, but it had the power to change our world today. And can I tell you, that same power exists if we would only recognize it. Yes. 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 If we would only recognize it. You see what happens here, and, and, and you're going to hear this in just a moment, but I believe that what we get to see 
Chapter. What we get to see is a personal glimpse into Paul's heart. But without further ado, I present to you Johnny Cash. Chapter 16. I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Sincrea, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord, Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Greet Apelles, approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my countryman. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, who have labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved Persis, who labored much in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philologus and Julia, Nerus and his sister, and Olympus and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my countrymen, greet you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and the host of the whole church, greet you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greet you, and Quartus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now has been made manifest, and by the prophetic scriptures has been made known to all nations, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, for obedience to the faith, to God alone wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Did you notice he closed three times? Amen. Surely he was Church of God Pentecostal. <laughs> but I want you to notice this because, and, and maybe that was the thing, maybe I hadn't seen it, but I see it now because I think this is actually a personal glimpse into Paul's heart. If we were to ask you how you would describe Apostle Paul, how would you describe him? Well, some of us say, you know, well, he was a serious man. You know, uh, he was sort of, some say, he's brilliant, he's very well educated, well spoken, he's logical, he's reverent, he's studious, he's uh, thoughtful, he's dedicated, he's driven, he's committed, he's a no-nonsense, determined sort of a guy. And all those words fit what we normally see him as the man from Tarsus. No nonsense, all business. He was someone that he probably didn't trifle with. Amen? Amen? But if you read his letters, he doesn't seem to be the kind of man that you'd want to take watch a football game or sit in 